The funnier side of death. Our late film. That's your funeral. Must have made a double booking. Well, if you ask me, it's going to be a dead heat. Unless you put your foot down. The idea. This is a proper funeral pace. Where's your respect, Percy? Well, I've seen you do 65 in this old bone shaker, Mr. Bullstrode. Oh, well, that was on the way home and the pubs were closing. Oh, very well, but I'm not waiting at Krem for Grimthorpe. We're number one funeral directors in this town. Always were, always will be. Right. Speed her up a bit, Basil. Nothing obvious, mind. It's all right, Jess. Can't miss that old banger. Look out, keep your eyes on the road. It's trying to beat us to the crib. You want me to give way? Give way? To all roids? Over my dead body. 109 years we fought the all roids. My father before me and his father before him. We take precedence in this town. Speed up a bit. So they want to play chicken, do they? We'll see you, chicken. Come on, lad, you can do better than that. Again, come on, faster, faster! All right, hold hard, and wait until I see the blacks of their eyes. Fasten your seat belts. Here's the crunch. This is sacrilege. All right. I shall report you. I shall report you to the Professional Association. You'll be struck off. Pardon me, Grimthorpe. This is no time to make a spectacle of yourself. I have some last rites to attend to. Look at my cortege. Desecrated. That driver of yours ought to be prosecuted. You're drunk. That scandal. A man in my position. If you want to play concertina where you're bereaved, that's up to you. Don't waste words with him. One of our party has a pressing appointment with his creator. Drive on. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop this profession. Stop right now. Stop this journal, because the last thing I do. <laughs> You've fought your last battle with Grimthorpe, Mr. All right. Ah, uh, you never know when call will come. He was too hot-blooded for this game. That was his trouble. I've waited a long time for him. He was the last of his family, wasn't he? That means we'll have to do John. Lucky, really, that we were passing. Send off if he'd been me. Are you doing it for him, trade?
Ceremony and class. It was a credit to us. A solid Zabili casket with bronze finials and inlays. What more does a man want? Pity, really, that he wasn't in a condition to enjoy it. Well, you can't have everything. And just think, from now on, apart from co op, this town's all ours. It calls for celebration. Come on. Listen to you, young Percy, and the way things should be done. Opulence without ostentation. Solemnity with solicitude. In a word, unction. It's your unction that marks a professional firm. Like remembering, Percy, to go to the toilet before you move off. I didn't know where to look that time I had to stop the cortege for you. Ah, to the late Mr. Grimthorpe. Ah, he looked better in a casket to Grimthorpe than he ever looked alongside one. We gave him dignity and poise and a certain sang Freud. Ah. There'll be notice taken of this job. Full write-up in our journal. I had some photographs taken. I thought I'd show them around at the annual conference next month. Cool, you don't mean to tell me you pass around photographs of stiffs at undertakers blowouts? Where's your respect, lad? I thank you to remember we are not undertakers, we are funeral directors. And never let me hear you use the word stiff outside these walls. Our clients are not stiffs, or corpses, or cadavers. They are the deceased. And relatives are not relatives, or mourners, or next of kin. They are the bereaved. And a wreath is not a wreath. It's a floral tribute. And a burial is not a burial. It's an interment. Terminology is everything in this business. Without the proper terminology, what have you got? A mere trade, with more of its fair share of heavy lifting. Now, the general public have no idea of the finer points. Now, which way would you point a deceased Muslim? Tell me that. Towards Mecca. Oh, the ignorance. A deceased Muslim, Percy, and remember this because there's a lot of it about. A deceased Muslim likes to point north to south. Now, the usual Christian alignment is east to west. So you can imagine the havoc that could be caused in a tidy cemetery by a couple of ill-timed Pakistanis. Ah, you've got a lot to learn, lad. When you've been with us a bit longer, you'll not talk about a shoving in. You'll refer to its solemn conveyance at casketed remains. Ah, talking of that, Mr. Allroyd, why is it you never lift a coffin with its handles? Not handles, lad. Coffin furniture. Well, if I can lift this mug by its handle, uh, furniture, um, why not a coffin? Because, Percy, lad, they have a nasty habit of falling off, which reminds me. Oh, I nearly forgot to put these back. Yeah, but those were, yes, um... Yes, yes, yes. We have an understanding of the creme. Is that one of the finer points you were talking about, Mr. Bullstrode? Deceased's not saying out. Neither will you. Oh, no, Mr. Allroyd. Cross me out and out to de I mean, decease. Oh, you're a wonderful dancer. I, uh, I feel I've been born along. <laughs> Do you know, I feel so safe in your hands. I must say, it makes a nice change to get him on something pliable. Uh, do you know, I've, I've never been to one of these balls before. Well, they're just the same as anyone else's, really. <laughs> you know, I must say, you uh, undertakers certainly know how to enjoy yourselves. I mean, not many people realise the troubles and traits of our profession. All this silence and solemnity and not much chance of social backshot. <laughs> so once a year, we... You know, we like to take the lid off, <laughs> so to speak. It's talking of that, I, uh, I haven't seen Murgatroyd this year. Didn't you heard? What? No. 
I'd have given him ten years. And that's a professional opinion. Got Death Watch beetle in his stock. Pined away. Sad loss. <laughs> very sad. Very sad in Very sad. 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 thing I've ever. Where's that fellow um, who lives near you? Grimsdyke, wasn't it? Grimthorpe. Oh, 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 oh. And yeah. <laughs> As I always say, he was only here for the beer. And now, I properly request an old favourite. Everyone in line, please, to form the grand cortege, the conga. <laughs> Straight under tears he went, right at the very gates of Krem. Mind you, we were asking for it. Know what you were doing? No? Running. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've got no competition now? Well, this co-op, always ready to snatch up anything that stops moving. Throwing in a three-course IT and a divvy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking. That name Grimthorpe rings a bell. I remember reading in the new issue of our journal about uh, the chap who was taking over his business. Taking over? He's going to bring some new ideas in. He's got a mortician's diploma from one of those American universities. No, no, no. You're thinking of somewhere else. Well, it said Worsfield. That's where you are, isn't it? Worsfield? You must be joking. He's probably getting busy at this very moment. You won't know what hit you. <laughs> Come on, we're just in time to catch the midnight train. Hey, even a rest. Vulgarity. No self-respecting body be found dead there. It was bad enough when Grimthorpe had it, but look at it now. It's just like a tart's boudoir. Dive on. Basil! Basil! Where is he? Basil! Basil! Oh, this tea up. It's you, Mr. Override. I don't pay you to lay yourself out. Sorry, it was a... I had a very heavy lunch. I... And this was the only vacant berth. So to speak. I'll say it's vacant. We've had no clients in here to speak of for a month. Well, uh, Something's got to be done about it. Well, uh, people die of their own free will. I mean, you can't force them. You want to be out. Calm in countryside for prospects. Bodies don't grow on trees, you know. They have to be cultivated, nurtured. And when time's ripe, raped. Raped. Lying in the air does not make you stiff. Oh, hang on, Mr. O'Rourke. I haven't sugared it yet. I can't credit it. They ought to be dropping like flies this time of year. Weather's ideal for it. Have you had any calls today? Only one. The traveller came round from the old sailors, wants to know whether we can take a consignment of lids and bottoms. It's a fine time to be flogging bottoms. We're up to our armpits in bottoms. Enough wood here to build a sauna. Why do I need so much lumber? Lumber, person. Person, lad, you see, you've got to be ready to deal with any type of class of funeral. You've got to cater to every whim or fancy. Look, lad. Um, now, if you wanted your classical, there you are, you see, your Greek straight lines. Well, and that's your Baroque, it, fruit and vegetables. And that's a touch of the veneers. Oh, have a look at this one, lad. Yeah. Look at that. That's the pride of our collection. Cool. You could seat eight men in that and enter it for a boat race. Yeah. You treat that with respect, lad. I'm thinking of keeping that for myself. It's all these others. Graves are positively yawning for them. I've got deep freeze, deep frosting. I've got them balming fluid going off and not a smell of a client. Where is everybody? I'll tell you where they're going. They're going up the road to that white and purple monstrosity. The haven of rest. I don't believe it. Have you tried the hospital? Yeah, the porters say there's nothing moving in the mortuary, Mr. Alroy. It's the same at the nursing home. 
On every bedside table, under the glass, there's a little card that says, The Haven of Rest treats your loved ones best. This has gone on long enough. People have always passed on in a nice, steady flow. This county's always held its place at top of mortality tables. Something's got to be done. I'll tell you what we will do, Percy. You and I will change into our civvies and we'll go up paving the rest and just see what they've got to offer that we haven't. They're playing our tune. My auntie had a sofa like this. <laughs> when does floor show begin? That's vulgar. That's what it is, I think vulgarity. Right. Let's see what sort of service they have to offer. Shop! Welcome to the Haven. Can I be of service? Oh, you've bought your dear one in person. How unusual. Eh? Eh? Oh, he's not... Um... How wise of you to bring him to us. He needs the caring touch that means so much. Not just at the moment, he doesn't. He was someone with a great capacity for feeling, wasn't he? I can always tell. Such sensitive hands. Was he very close? Too close. He must have been a great loss. Dead loss. I'm here to offer you all the therapy and solace I can. We're at your call day and night. <laughs> I think we should get down to essential details. Oh. <laughs> about your dear one. He'd like to be exposed, naturally. Pardon? We offer a choice of the half open casket or full exposure on the chaise long. Uh, I don't even need to go that far at the moment. Well, I'm sure you'll change your mind once you've inspected our reposing room. Oh. Perhaps you'd like to browse around while I fetch our principal, Mr. Smallbody. He will advise on position. Through here. Make yourself at home. Here, yeah, I don't want any of that full frontal exposure bit. You've got nothing to hide. How do you know? Well, you stay here. Come on, because I'm going to have a bit of a browse. And don't pick your nose. Because they all think you're dead. to eternity. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Gone with the wind. You'd think they'd give you something more cheerful to read. <laughs> oh. The Haven of Rest welcomes you warmly and sincerely. My name is Roland Smallbody. It'll be my privilege to supervise the preparation of your dear one. Uh, he's before me. I see you've been admiring one of our dear ones. Is the client waiting, Miss Peach? Yes, Mr. Smallbody. Send him in. We believe in the personal touch here. Our clients are all VIBs to us. Ah, uh, well, of course, none of us look our best at a time like this. <laughs> D don't worry about the vacant look. Oh, I'm used to that. It's his natural expression. You'll be surprised what a few hours in our preparation room will make. <laughs> you won't know him. He'll look absolutely human. That's the province of my partner, the beautician. He has magic in his fingertips. <laughs> 
Mr. Sol, are you free? It ain't a jiffy. It must be in the middle of some rather tricky back cavity. We have a, a bit of a challenge here, when you've got a moment. Now we'll proceed to the selection of a casket. Six coffins, no waiting. Let's try this for a fit. Just as I thought, the light sat in wood for that pasty complexion. It's rubbish. You'd be through it in a fortnight. We call it the Royal Ascot. Now, for this, we advise a complete outfit in velvet. What? What's all? What's oh, yes, we offer a comprehensive range of burial wear, outerwear, underwear, footwear. I see him as a young aristocrat. He's not going to a Masonic dinner. He's going to somewhere far more important. The last leave-taking, where he will leave a memory picture to be treasured by all those who knew him. I don't believe you. Oh, what a specimen. Yes, he is, isn't he? I was referring to our possibilities. Oh, goody. We are nice and fresh. Oh, wonderfully pliable and yielding. It will be a joy to get our hands on us. I was already thinking in terms of peacock blue. Peacock, perfect, yes. The moment I set eyes on him, I said peacock blue. Did he have any hobbies, any passions that could be adapted for the chaise long? None that you could illustrate. <laughs> Couldn't we just leave him as he is? Oh, dear me, no. Now, that is not our policy at the Haven. Lovelier than in life is our motto. And just the hint of a smile? The happy dawning? Uh, no, Roland. I think we should go as far as the full radiant. <laughs> What about the complexion, Mr. Soul? Well, I was toying with uh, Honey Ten at this instant, Miss Peach. Hmm. I saw him more as a case for toasted beige. Oh, poor, poor, Miss Peach. I'm not against a bit of touching up, but uh, we don't want the people to think that we're bringing in cocos, you know. Ugh, dear, dear me, I must be flying. I have to pop something into the fridge. <laughs> but we will see you on the slab. Page 129. Yes. Uh, we must get to work. If you would care to leave your signature and uh, <clears throat> deposit with Miss Peach, leave everything to us. By the time we've made our final adjustments, your dear one will be transfigured. Remember, it is the caring touch that means so much. <laughs> would you like to sit down? I have a form here that I'd like you to fill in there and there with the details of your dear one. But that was your dear one. Ah, oh, yes, well, uh, he's become the dear departed now, hasn't he? But we haven't finished. Not we have. <laughs> We're going right back to Allroyd's. Our customers like to pass over in black and white. Not ruddy technicolor. Well, what's the idea of that little charade? Do you think they're on to us? Never. Just curiosity. Oh, very well for you to talk, Roland. If we can put on an act, so can they. I, I don't like it. We cannot afford suspicion. What is there to suspect? <laughs> That's the beauty of the whole scheme. All right, gruesome twosome. Small body and soul. 
Oh, I wouldn't mind a bit more therapy from that Miss Peach. Oh, she's just what we need here, a hostess. Hostess? We're not running an airline. You ought to see their VIP departure lounge. Wall to wall, Wilton. Pipe music, air conditioning, everything. Sort of an in-flight movie. It's blasphemous. It's not British. It'll ever catch on round here. Well, it's better and more inviting than our window display. A couple of dusty urns and a plastic lily. They wanted to put him into peacock blue. <laughs> it might be all right down south. We're decadent enough for anything. But north of a line, through Stoke-on-Trench, your deceased wants to be laid out in white and no anky-panky. We've got to compete, Mr. Allroyd. Uh, couldn't we offer them uh, treble black stamps? Mm. It's time we put these fast book operators in their place. All we need is a good substantial death in this town. Somebody is standing. Then you see the name of Alroyd still counts for something. Oh, we've got to do something. Uh, by the way, I uh, heard from our agents this morning. But what? Uh, has there been a hitch? Keep your nerve, Eugène. <laughs> Everything's working perfectly smoothly. A casket containing a special client has been dispatched. It's arriving via the night ferry to Dover. The night ferry? You're not entrusting it to the vagaries of the British Rail. When do you expect delivery? In the railway zone, good time. We can afford to wait. It won't deteriorate. It's been well wrapped. <laughs> uh, the station will inform us the moment it arrives. I'm in constant touch with the parcels office. Well, I suspect this plan. It's worked flawlessly. Who could guess that in a matter of weeks, we've established ourselves as the best-known funeral directors in the area? Who could guess that we've taken the psalm literally when we say that all flesh is grass? Oh, I do wish <laughs> you wouldn't use that word. Turns me to jelly. Yes, this time I think we could truly say that we're expecting a dear one. But, but I mean, they'd probably open it, the customs. Of course the customs won't open it. They're too busy looking for the stuff in cars. Hello? Oh, hello. Uh, is that Holroyd's? Yes, Holroyd's Day and Night Service. Uh, what's that name? Taylor. Ezra Taylor. The soft drink's king. Taylor's gusto puts the pep in pop. He owns this town. I've been waiting for him. Give me that phone. Emmanuel Holroyd speaking. May I offer our most sincere condolences on this tragic loss? Of course, I knew the late Mr. Taylor well, who did not. It'll be an honour and a privilege to inter him in a manner befitting his station in life. Eh? Oh, well, to cremate him in the style to which he's accustomed. Of course, we have more than a century of experience to place at your disposal. And may I mention, we use nothing but the finest limousines. Oh, yes, we collect. Our radio control collection van will be at your door within minutes. What's that? Uh, like a minicab, exactly so, yes. May I ask to whom I have the honour of speaking? Uh, my name is Simmons, personal secretary to the late Ezra Taylor. He passed on in Monte Carlo while drinking a half bottle of very fizzy pssst. It was very sad. Oh, very sad. Yes. Uh, the remains are due of our British Rail at any moment. Will you make absolutely certain that you're at the station to receive them? Thank you indeed, sir. It will be a privilege. A melancholy but gratifying privilege. Good day. We got it. He's in bag. A real big one. Taylor's Gusto advertised all over town. He snuffed it on a coat d'azur. We've got to go down to the station to collect him. He's coming in by rail any minute right. now. Come on, come Percy, on. get the come on, come on, come on. Get the van. We want that box. Uh, hello, is that some painters? Some pain? Oh. I thought you'd been some painters and you get St. Ellen's. Uh, hello, uh, Miss Luke. <laughs> I, I, I asked yeah. to uh, look, look at this. Don't bother me at the moment. I've just lost 1,200 day old chicks last seen on Eaton Wednesday. If we don't find them soon, they'll be molted. Never mind about your chicks. They've just got a stiff here by a rugby. Uh, oh, one of them, well, he got it. Nemo Taylor comes from France. Seems to be urgent. It says here, treat with the utmost dispatch. Hey, oh, that's what they've been mithering about up at the Avon Arrest. Might as well tell them the glad tidings. At the station already? No, don't touch it. We'll come for it ourselves immediately. Jenkins, get the van! It's here. It 
It's about that consignment of maggots. Yeah, well, where are they? Well, look, they're wanted for a fishing competition tomorrow, and they've got to be fresh, you know. They're going mad up at Scarborough. Well, I... How then, Arthur? This box? Oh, that's what I want to know. Nobody's seen it since crew. Eh? Hey? You know, they're funny things, maggots. You've got to watch them, you don't know what they'll be up to. You don't mean... I had a consignment once it gnawed its way clean through the box and all over the down platform. Place for crawling. It's not maggots we're interested in. At least not yet. It's a body by the name of Taylor arriving via Dover. Oh, him, yeah, he passed on. We know he's passed on, but where is he now? He was collected. Look, I'm in the middle he of a crisis. He can't have been collected. We've only just come to collect him. Look, all right, your body is no longer the responsibility of British Rail. I washed my hands of your body. We were collected and time for. Roland Smallbody. That's a haven of rest. Eh? He's nicked it. It's a snatch. It's an outrage. Nobbled under our noses, be Birkenair. No, that's not their name. It's what he said first off, the Avon arrest. They reckon he was a special customer. Well, he was our special customer, you stupid-headed maggot. You just stood there and let them take our corpse. You'll hear more of this through proper authorities. Forty years I've been meeting bodies off your trains and they've never caused trouble. I'll have you shunted. Well, it's not my fault, is it? You all look the same, you undertakers. You're like Chinese. Anyway, they've only just taken it. Sort it out for yourselves. And what? Is that crew? Well, look, have you looked into them maggots yet? Down! I'd rather he'd gone to co-op. This is a very solemn moment. There's enough hash in there to make us all rich enough to retire and live like Onassis. All right, Jenkins, open it. But it's a body. Well, I can see it's a body. Someone must have blundered. Well, don't just stand there. You've all seen one before, haven't you? Who is it? Look, have you seen the evening paper? This is him, all right. Founder of the Soft Drinks Empire. Being brought back from Monte Carlo, civic funeral plan. We must take it back. We'll take it back and let everyone know we're expecting another casket from France to arrive at any moment. We might as well ask the police to collect it for us. Well, what else can we do? We shall conduct him to his last resting place. Until the client arrives, we'll simply go about our business. I saw the paper said, flowers to Holroyds. Let them arrange the funeral, but when the time comes, we shall conduct it. You see, they're short of one vital thing, the body. 109 years we've been established, never lost a body. It's enough to make your blood run warm. Hello? Yes? Uh, hang on, I'll pass you on to my colleague. Um, it's, it's the big house. They want to know when they can see the body. No. Oh. Hello, Mr. Simmons. Ah, Bullstrode here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Your late employer arrived quite safely. Oh, well, that'd be a bit difficult at the moment. You, you see, we, we, we have certain, uh, shall we say, adjustments to make. Well, in a case like this, certain problems arise in transit. Oh, I see. The family want to hold a, a private leave taking before the funeral. When? Tomorrow morning. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll be all right. We could have them up there by then. At the house, certainly. My. We've got till tomorrow morning to deliver him. Well, how can we deliver him if we haven't got him? Well, we've got to think of something, haven't we? Oh, see what that is. It's probably Purvis. What, him with Waxwork Museum? Yeah, the Madame Tussauds of Worsfield. He phoned us up earlier on. He wants to see us about something. All right, I've come to ask you a favour. 
I want to view the remains. What remains? Well, Ezra Taylor, of course. The Gusto King. As luck would have it, I've just been working on him. What on earth are you on about? I've just modelled him in wax. Bit of luck, really. I reckoned he didn't have long to go, so I asked him for a sitting with the calipers while he was still available. <laughs> he was dead chuffed. He'll be on show tomorrow. I've already announced it outside the museum. <laughs> it was dead lucky he snuffed it at the right time. Some people have got no respect. Well, topicality is everything in the waxworks business. I badly needed a new local celebrity for the Hall of Fame. I mean, <laughs> let's face it, Freddie Truman's past his best. Gusto here was the answer to a prayer. You haven't got him in that box. Here he is. One of my masterpieces. There's artistry in that. To think only a few weeks ago you were Georgie Brown, weren't you? Yeah. Sick transit, Gloria Mundy. Sick what? Shut up. Uh, out of the frying pan into the fire. Exactly. It's melting down that puts the costs up. Take De Gaulle, for instance. Total write-off. <laughs> Still, he made two Georgie bests. <laughs> You've got to economise somewhere. Just a minute, Purvis. Is this an exact replica? Spitting image. I just brought him along to check my handiwork with nature's. I'm a bit worried about one of his pimples. You see, I pride myself on my pimples. So if you don't mind, I'll have a quick look to check the finer points. Uh, I'm afraid that's not possible at the moment. We can't have our corpse disturbed. It's at a very critical state. What about body? Have you modelled that? Ah, well, when it comes to trunks and lower extremities, uh, we have our shortcuts. But <laughs> well, that's something we like to keep to ourselves. You know? oh, well, you, you can tell us. I mean, we have got our trade secrets too. Oh. Well, to save expense, you see, you've got two basic bodies. You've got the substantial public man, you know, your Henry VIII type, or you can be anything from Harold Wilson one moment to George Pompidou the next. And then you've got your lean, leathery type, you know, your Duke of Edinburgh, your Cary Grant. The beauty of it is, they're interchangeable. Nay, but that's subterfuge. Subtil what? He means the heads are interchangeable. As it happens, I've got a nice body that'll suit old Ezra down to the ground. He's propping up Enoch Powell at the moment. He's not the draw he was. It'll look just like him when I've got him dressed up. No-one will tell the difference. I've got an old suit of his from his butler, exactly the same as the one he's being laid out in. Davis. Does this look like 50 quid to you? Well, what if it does? It's a down payment on your Mr. Taylor. I'm hiding him. Well, what for? You've got one already. Ah, well, in a word, you see, the late Mr. Taylor didn't travel very well. We've had to put him in the deep freeze for a while, and he has an appointment tomorrow morning with his kith and kin who want to pay their last respects, and naturally, to save embarrassment and spare their feelings, we want him to look at his best. Well, I need him for my exhibition. You can have him back the moment he's finished lying in state, with another 50 quid. No, oh, I don't know about that. You see, it's a question of ethics. Somebody might find out. Oh, miss. You wouldn't be thinking of talking, would you? I mean, there are a few things about the waxwork business that the public better not find out. You wouldn't like people to know that the Duke of Edinburgh is really Malcolm Muggeridge underneath, would you? Shut up. Well, how do we look? Oh, it's a wonderful job, Eugé. Restrained, dignified. I think I've managed to give him a certain je ne sais quoi. Oh, your signature is written all over him. Uh, that expression, it's a new one to me. How can I put it? The whimsical? The quizzical? I call it de gâché. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Careful you don't smudge him. Oh, he'll be under the care, all right. That's the most expensive casket on the market. Yes, it's known as the Windsor Castle. Every funeral director has a casket, something like this, that he saves for the real classy jobs. All right, let's get him up to the house before Smallbody and his gang are out there. Sign of rigor mortis on his pals yet. 
No, they've not set in yet, Mr. Bulstrode. Ah, uh, you're our lookout. Yes. Tip us the link, and then keep out of sight till I give you the word. spent a great deal of his life abroad, you know. None of the family have seen him for a long time. Oh, that's a blessing. I beg your pardon? I mean, it's always a consolation when there's no close relative left to grieve. They look curiously waxed, don't they? Uh, we like to send our clients out in mint condition, Mr. Simmons. Years have fallen away. <laughs> yes, I must admit he looks ten years younger than when I last saw him. Well, his holiday in Monte Carlo did him good, you can see that. Did he leave any last wishes about funeral arrangements? He wished to be cremated in his favourite boots, which he always wore. And the safe containing the formula for gusto was to be opened immediately after the funeral. The solicitor will be there to do it straight after the ceremony. Uh, do, do you want me, Ben? There appears to be some confusion. Uh, I'm expecting some more of my men. Have they arrived? Ah, well, uh, Mr. Bulstrode, uh, would you give them their instructions? We shan't be needing their help. Let us eat. These men have got no business here. This is a fine time to come touted for customers when we're in the middle of a solemn farewell. Mr. Simmons, we have uh, the late Mr. Taylor here. <laughs> You're not asking us to believe that a deceased of his standing would patronize a jumped up vulgar Maltesian shooting break like yours. <laughs> Look, I don't know who you have got in there, but it can hardly be the late Mr. Taylor. <laughs> He's already in residence. <laughs> Out of my way, Undertaker. Be off, body snatcher. This is monstrous. Let's see, now's our chance. You know what we're going to do? Be off. Right. But he's an imposter. What? Take no notice of him. He's not himself. And he's not himself. We've got the body out here. My house! We were going to go into this afternoon's arrangements. My ears! It's a lovely engine, I'll say that for him. Must be a pleasure to you, Mr. Bulstrode, to get out of low gear for a change. You know, I've always rather fancied myself, Bessie, for the Hearst Drivers Grand Prix, from Golders Green to Woking via Karl Marx's grave, and I like it. Oh, happy days are here again. They've got our hearse. <laughs> What's the funny? What's the funny? I've just remembered. I forgot to fill the tank this morning. They've only got half a gallon to go. <laughs> well, if I put my foot down, that old banger won't be able to keep up with this. Oh, it'll blow a gasket. Right then. Here we go. <laughs>
Well, in this street, Percy, where there's a wage dispute, the union orders a go fast. Well, it's a bit unusual, officer, but I think you can have a look inside. Uh, it's a pretty urgent job. He's been hanging about too long. Still, time and tide waits for nobody, Shakespeare says. And I can see you're not a man to shirk an unpleasant duty. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 we'll have it open in a second. Percy, get the air freshener, will you? I don't think there's need to go to those lengths. No, well, thank you very much. There is something you could do for us. Uh, we had a bit of a breakdown earlier on, and we sent for a relief. So if you see an old hearse come in, would you stop it, turn it back, tell them we can manage without it now. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 thank you. <laughs> He's still in the back. Quick, come on, let's get out of here. Come out, the coast's clear. They fell right into our little trap. Oh, you're a master of strategy, <laughs> Mr. Bullstrode. I'd like to see their faces when they find it's empty. <laughs> At this game, Percy, you've got to learn to outbox your opponents, and that's... Guess what we've done. Oh, thank God I found you. I want my waxworks back. It's an emergency. You know the Taylor Memorial Library? Well, they're having a civic opening straight after the funeral, and they want a statue for the entrance. Well? Well, they haven't got one. He snuffed it before he could have a sitting. Well, it's just their bad luck, isn't it? Oh, it's my good luck. It's worth a packet to me. I've promised to cast a bronze out of my waxwork effigy. You know, like they did with Beethoven. Where is he? Well, we just... Uh... He's, uh... He's on exhibition up at the late Mr. Taylor's residence. Well, I'll go down there and get it. It's and a rush job, is this? They want it in a few hours, you no, know. No, no, just you leave that to us. As it so happens, we're going up there now to get it back. Yeah, all right, bring it straight down to the foundry, will you? Everything's right. ready. I'll just go and start smelting. Yeah. Right. Come on, then. Get her off. At least we got our house back with a full tank. Yes, but what about him in here? He won't run away. Hold a second, you better stay behind. Keep your eye on him. Oh, don't leave me here alone. When they find out we still got him, they'll be round here spitting formaldehyde. Well, hide him. Hide him! Hide him where they won't expect to find him. Searched the entire premises. Devil of the dummy it. Hello? Oh, it's you, Miss Beach. What? Where? Yes, keep trailing them. We'll come immediately. Jenkins, come with me. Oh, the 
Bill. Hello? Percy? Yeah, you should be back here. We've got the box back with the waxwork in it. We want the real contents. Where are you? What? You're talking from inside a box? So am I. Yes. Well, what have you done with our elite client? I've put him by the pension queue. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll have to go. It looks as though he's about to draw it. Seems a shame to keep him waiting in his condition. No, 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 it's all right. He, he only came in for a while. My row of 100% worsteds having a snooze. Give me the fright of my life, I do not tell you. Yeah, well, come on, mate. It's time I got you home. You'll find Miss Peach. See if she's got the body. It's about them homing pigeons. Forty-five homing pigeons got on at Wick. Hey, Arthur! Arthur! Oh. It's back again. That stiff from France. Oh, I thought we'd said goodbye to that. No, only au revoir. Yeah, that's what Mr. Allroyd was on about. It seems to have lost its docket. Well, never mind the docket. You get it in the van and down to him with my compliments. We don't want him making any more trouble. There you are. Where have you been? I thought I'd never find you. All right, you're mad. Where's the... Well, they were after me. I had to resort to subterfuge. Ah. It was any port in the storm, so I put them in this window here, marked down to 1495. Well, he's not there now, is he? He's gone! Well, I'm not surprised. If you stuck him next to notice which said everything must go, you can't blame him if he's up and went. But nobody would have bought him. I mean, the, the Haven of Rest must have got him after all. I see. I can't wait to see Holroyd's face when you tell him that one of his deceased has been knocked off as the bargain of the week. Hello. Mr. Holroyd? What's to do then? We've got some up for you. It's that body from France, named Taylor. There's been a bit of a mix up. I'll say there's been a mix up. You've had me. What did out of my mind? Anyway, here it is. Arthur sends it with his compliments. Where do you want it? Unfair slant, he's got a funeral to catch. Where have you been? Do you know what time it is? Civic parties waiting, furnaces are waiting, and then limousines are costing me 50p a minute. What's the matter with you? <coughs> oh, well, uh, we got rather grave news, Mr. All right. Ah, you tell him, Percy. Uh, well, you see, I just turned me back and he was gone before... Before, uh... before he went. He'd gone before he went. The late Mr. Taylor, he's not lost, he's just gone before. I don't know what's come over here. Late Mr. Taylor's over there. How the heck did he get on there? They've just delivered him from the station. They found him again. But he can't be. They wouldn't have... Oh, shut up! I don't give a monkey's bollock how he got in there. Give thanks to the great undertaker. But I'll... Well, don't stand there like a bad case of Paul Bearer's palsy. Get on board. Well, our reputation to think of. 
Our deceased have always been dead on time. Hello? Yes? What body? Oh, the one that was misrooted. Uh, aye, yes, we dealt with that all right. You sent that stiff over, didn't you? Yes, <laughs> Oh, the, the moment that we clapped eyes on it, it was sent over to Holroyd's about half an hour ago. Down to Holroyd's? What? You mean the special clan? That old idiot sent it to Holroyd's. Oh, that's enough. I can't take it any longer. But, Eugene, you're coming with us. Oh, Roland. I can't take this train anymore. I phoned my friend in Bournemouth. There's an opening. A respectable firm. But, Eugene, we're such a wonderful combination. What with your artistry and my head for business? I'm sorry, Roland. I'm too tender a plant for this nerve-wracking work. <laughs> you find peace in Bournemouth. You just can't let him go like that. I have no time to argue. Go after him, Miss Peach. Try to bring him back. Jenkins, you're coming with me. We're going to get that box. Time you was going home for your tea. I say, time you was going home for your tea. Wake up, Uncle Jack. You've been dozing off there for hours. You're not Uncle Jack. Where have I seen you before? Oh, bloody heck. <laughs> There it is. They must have gone to the funeral and left it. And Jenkins, to open it. Ah. Well, you realize what this means. Precisely. The special client. It's on its way to the creme. Get this on a hearse and drive like the devil. We've got to stop that funeral. Not on your own! Don't get some help! lost my running order. What was the name again? The, the, this is Mr. Taylor, Padre. The Mr. Taylor. Ah, yes, sir. Taylor, Taylor, yes. Padre, run the back as quick as you can. Bend your knees. It won't be for long. Just pretend you're less to figure. That's all they're trying to beat us to it. For Pete's sake, get that box moving. Ah, you keep the party talking. Don't let the congregation come in. We'll slip around the side. Hang on to that. We can use it tomorrow. Oh, I wasn't expecting to. Who have we here? Taylor, Father. Late Mr. Taylor. Well, I'm afraid he's too late. He's already arrived. Well, I'm afraid there's been a bit of a mix-up, you see. It's a very common name. As your brother in the Lord. I don't like to hold uncharitable thoughts, but are you trying to pull a fast one? Keep it up. If I keep it up much longer, there's no point in them going home. Now, get the casket off Holroyd's hearse. Come on. Give me that box! Give me that 
box. That's ours. That's mine. That's your funeral. Are we all sorted out? Yes, sir. We are. We're ready. Show them in, please. Straight in, please, ladies and gentlemen. They're not getting away with this. We'll go round the back and grab the box as it comes through. Here's the rest. We'll make an inquiry by the casket consigned to you from France. Is this your signature? What signature? I don't know what you're talking about. Can't you see I'm in the middle of conducting a funeral? Oh, no, you're not. This is our funeral. Perhaps the name Eugene might jog your memory. He and Miss Peach have been helping us with our inquiries. Here, hold that one as well. All we want now is their casket. There's been some very funny business going on at this crematorium. You wouldn't have seen anything of it, would you? Casket? Casket? This is a funeral, not the Merchant of Venice. I mean, it couldn't be that one in there, could That's it? That's the very idea. This is one of the most impressive funerals in these parts since we did your chief constable. And he took some doing, I can tell you. We've got the creme de la creme in there. Sorry you've been bothered. Carry on. As we pay our last respects to this casket and its precious contents, we remember the words of the psalmist. The days of man are but as grass, for he flourisheth as a flower of the field. As the wind goeth over it, it is gone. Place thereof knoweth it no more. That settles their hash. Get that presentation cigarette box, lad. Your brand, I see. And those are all first, will you, lad? Got to get something done about this chimney. Tastes a bit funny. Does it taste funny to you? Hard to say with all this smoke about. You shouldn't be smoking like that. These furnaces have never been right since they changed over to North Sea gas. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, could I have your tributes? We're publishing a page of tributes in the Echo to the late Mr. Uh, Taylor. Uh, just a few words would do. Well, I suppose you could say that he will be sadly missed in Town Hall. Long and distinguished service to council. He did a lot for Borough. He uh, did a lot for the county. Mm. Presided on the bench for 25 years, never flinched. Mm. It's a hard bench to sit on. We mustn't forget his uh, sterling work on the Baths and Wash House Committee and... Is there a funny smell around here? Aye, very funny. Can, uh, can you smell anything funny, Horace? I will, uh, to resume what I was saying. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, uh, about his sad loss. Oh, his, his sad loss, yes, and... I suppose you could say he's ira... ira no, no, wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, ira, ira, uh, anyway, it's, it's tragic. <laughs> <laughs> a melancholy occasion. <laughs> His memory will remain ever green and... What was the word? Fragrant! Yes, that's it, <laughs> fragrant! <laughs> 
<laughs> to think a lifetime of service and puff, up spout he's alive. Fragrant, that's a good one. Could I have a few words from you, Lord Lieutenant? <laughs> Lord Lieutenant? Sir? What's going on here? I feel most peculiar. How do you look it? <laughs> Where did you get that hat? Where did you get that tile? You can talk, her, but you look a right nana in that get-up. I've always said so. Well, I bother you'd look no better here. Oh, 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 you look a right Berkeley. Yeah, let's try it on him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all seemed to have gone splendidly in the end. Splendidly, Padre, yes. You, you were inspired. Their grief was a great credit to you. <laughs> really? Was I good? It was a most reverent occasion, Reverend. Well, I must speed off to the towers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel all right, sir. I feel as though the top of my head was on fire. <laughs> Give me the money. Give me the corpse. How do you do that? Leave the rest to me. On the command, charge. I want you all to charge, you understand? And let them have it with everything you've got. <laughs> there, the town is not a mercy. Spare the women and children. is in trust for the Ezra Taylor Foundation and Memorial Library, whose opening we are to witness this afternoon. I am, however, empowered to open this ancient safe, where the late Mr. Taylor deposited his instructions for the future of Gusto and the formula for his beneficial beverage. This is a solemn moment. <laughs> it has not been opened since Mr. Taylor deposited this key with my firm at the outbreak of the First World War. Taylor, to all my surviving relatives, you bunch of idle, gormless good-for-nothings. <laughs> By the time you read this, I will be up the chimney and so will the formula for my gusto. <laughs> I'll die in my boots, see if I don't, and that's where I keep it. <laughs> uh, I never got out for nout, and uh, neither will you. Yours, laughing beyond the grave, E. Taylor, 4th of August, 1914. Oh. 
you know, I don't seem to remember a thing. Have we, or have we not, performed some last rites this afternoon? Aye, we have. Mark you, there was a moment when I thought the deceased was not going to be amongst those present. <laughs> but we uh, saw him up the spout to everybody's satisfaction. Where's Percy? Well, he's going to get the ashes. I don't know about you, but I'm going to put my feet up in a chapel of rest. Good idea. <sighs> I'm worn out with oh. all this cavorting about. I've never known a corpse run me off my feet I... like this. Never knew where to find. <clears throat> What's that? Uh, it seems to be a body, Mr. O'Roy. It's not a body. It's the body. Will somebody tell me what a body is doing on my premises? I don't want to find a body on my premises, but I've just cremated it with full civic honours and members of local government in attendance. What's it doing here? It's no right to be here. What have you got there? Uh, that's the remains, Mr. Bullstrode. <laughs> that's what? You don't mean to tell me we've cremated that? Mr. Purvis is... It's been a terrible mistake. Well, they said at the creme that mistakes cannot afterwards be rectified. And that's not the only thing that can't afterwards be rectified. What about that? Oh, my head spinning. I need a drink. Spare stiff. Funeral director's nightmare. 109 years we've been established. 109 years and nothing but respect. I'll never be able to show my face at Thaniel Conference if this gets out. What can you do with a corpse that's surplus to requirement? Best thing to do would be to bury him. You can't go around burying dead bodies as fancy takes you. Law's very strict. You need your death certificate, your disposal certificate. You need papers. Corpse can't move without papers. He's used his. Couldn't we give him to the National Health? We daft. You've got to have relatives' permission and triplicate. And to see their faces as we told them that we'd committed a waxworks in error. Just a moment. Couldn't we give him to Burgess? We have to give him something because here he comes. There you are, all right. I've been waiting hours for you. Where's me waxworks? I thought for a minute you were playing fast and loose with me. Oh, no, we wouldn't do a thing like that, Mr. Burris. Would we, Mr. Owen? No, no, no. The idea. Well, they're expecting to unveil the statue at the Memorial Library this very afternoon. The foundry's ready, the mall's ready, but we've got to put the effigy in it before we can pour the bronze. You mean they're going to cover him with metal? That's right. You can't be bronze for permanence. I can't waste time explaining the process. This is a crisis. The van's outside. Did you say permanent? Right, Mr. Purvis. He's all yours. We credit him up for you. Oh, we'll just give you a hand to get him onto your car. Right. Well, I hope that's the last we see of that. Not quite. He brought nothing into this world, and it seems a pity he should take anything out. Mr. Allroyd, Mr. Bullstrode, they've just been on the phone from the house. Uh, they want the scattering at four o'clock at, at the Memorial Library. They want the ashes. Ashes? Ashes. Well, don't stand there like a wet lettuce. Please go and rake them up from somewhere. Honestly, half the time he doesn't know his hurts from his elbow. Oh, Basil, you're so coarse. <laughs>
Hey, cigarette. Bless you. I thought we were going to be late. It's all right, Padre. The remains are present. I thank you. Friends, we are gathered here today to pay tribute to a great benefactor of this borough. He lived a life of gusto. Uh, follow me, please. <laughs> oh, uh, Simmons. I, uh, I think Mr. Taylor would have liked you to have had this. It's the recipe. I, I want two grand for it. And it gives me great pleasure to lay this memorial stone to the memory of a great man. And I declare this stone well and truly laid. I commit these ashes to the memory of a good Samaritan who devoted himself to good works for the benefit of his fellow citizens. As in the times to come, we look upon this memorial, we shall remember how he threw himself into it, heart and soul. Shania Twain or Patrick Kilty's guests next, so stay right here. A celebration of an extraordinary time. There was something in those times that made everybody feel it was possible to go that bit further. Featuring interviews with those who had it, made it, and occasionally lost it. We sat down and calculated that we were going to make history. I'd have certainly wore a better outfit, and I may have gone to bed a little bit earlier. I heard it described as the perfect encapsulation of the Brit pod aesthetic. No oh idea. The story of Cool Britannia, live forever. Monday at 10.35 on BBC Two. People coming apart at the seams, and you supremely indifferent. You feel you have no responsibility for this death. The shattering conclusion of death in holy orders, tomorrow at 8.30 on BBC One. It's nothing private anymore. Join Radio One this bank holiday weekend, live from the Reading and Leeds festivals, Greenfields and the Notting Hill Carnival. Continues tonight with The Essential Mix from 2 a.m. Late night, top of the pops in 45 minutes here on BBC One after some strong language.